Raiders, this is Kaylin Shaner, and welcome back to my channel. For this video, I wanted to do the copy book tag. Now, I first saw this tag on Jesse the Reader on YouTube, so go check him out. Link in the description below. And it just seemed completely and totally dropping shit over here. And it just seemed totally up my alley because I love coffee and I love books. It's kind of my, my motif here, guys, like my intro to like my channel trailer and every video I have a different coffee mug or try to anyway and I act like coffee mugs and total coffee holic. Coffee holic. Caffeine addict? Anyway. So I've Got my, my coffee and let's get started. Black. Name a series that's tough to get into but has hardcore fans. So I'm gonna go with I'm gonna go with Game of Thrones by George R. R. Martin as part of the A Song of Ice and Fire series. This book has gained huge momentum and popularity and rightfully so because it's incredible. However, the writing style and the length is just really hard to get through. Um, I have sat down to read this book like five times, and um, I'll be honest, I'm a fan mostly because it's a TV show and as a book nerd, that pains my heart. The fans are super dedicated and, and super, super into it, especially the ones of the book itself more so than the TV series, and the TV series has a massive following, um, but it, it's just a really difficult, kind of dry read, at least the first chapter of it. Peppermint Mocha. Name a book that gets more popular during the winter or a festive time of year. I'm not going to go with winter or Christmas or even one book, but an author, and for Halloween. I feel like every Halloween... Stephen King just gets even more popular than usual. Um, it especially just is everywhere during Halloween. His writing and his stories are so creepy and dark that they just fit the Halloween motif and everyone kind of has caught on to that. Hot Chocolate. What is your favorite children's book? I think I would have to say The Chronicles of Narnia. As, as you can see from the, the frayed edge and such, I've had this book for a long time and have read it so, so many times. And that was one of the first introductions I had into the world of magic outside of like Disney movies and stuff. As far as novels, like, it was pretty fantastic. Underneath the question is a picture of the Chronicles of Narnia. <laughs> I didn't do that on purpose. <laughs> Double Shot of Espresso. Name a book that kept you on the edge of your seat from start to finish. The Savior's Champion by Jenna Moresi. Just, I mean, respect the labyrinth. Obey the labyrinth. How much more nerve-wracking do you have to get just from the fucking tagline on the front of the book? Like, they're thrown into this labyrinth, and I'm, I'm gonna try not to do spoilers, but just like she's she's not afraid to truly torture her characters and put them through hell and she's not afraid of death or violence or horrible 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 things this this book crushed my soul in the best way possible it it uh, it it was it was a roller coaster of a book I read it in maybe three days. It's like a 500 page book. Starbucks. Name a book you see everywhere. Harry Potter is everywhere. Um, I'm especially active on Instagram. And I feel like every other book on my Instagram feed, on my bookstagram feed, is Harry Potter. Which there's nothing wrong with that. It's a great series. Lots of love. But yeah, it just... Uh, my whole fucking feed. Um, that and the Shadowhunter series, not quite as much, but it's, it's definitely... 
That Hipster Coffee Shop. Give a book by an indie author a shout out. Guys. Guys, I don't I don't know how much longer I can keep doing this. Is there a Jenna Marcy fan club? Can, can, can I can I be a part of that? Hell, I'll be the fucking president at this point because this is getting ridiculous. But, uh, my answer would have to be these two books. Jenna fucking Marcy. Go check her out. Just, just, just go do it. Oops, I accidentally got decaf. Name a book you were expecting more from. The Silence of the Girls by Pat. I got this from the Book of the Month Club and featured it on my channel, kind of with the notion that hopefully you guys enjoyed it more than I did, just because the, the world, like the, the Trojans and the Greeks and everything is already just a, a cool thing to nerd out on, but nothing happened in this novel. The only sense of conclusion or peace I got in this book, the, the only thing that made it feel like it was building towards something was the third to last paragraph in the whole novel on the very last page. You, you, I didn't see any character development. She didn't seem to make peace with her captivity, nor did she fight for her freedom. It, it just, it wasn't you thought it was building towards some great escape plan, or maybe her falling in love with Achilles, or just literally anything, and the novel kind of just ends where it began. And literally these sentences are the only thing that made it even remotely worthwhile. What will they make of us, the people of those unimaginably distant times? One thing I do know. They won't want the brutal reality of conquest and slavery. They won't want to be told about the massacres of men and boys, the enslavement of women and girls. They won't want to know we were living in a rape camp. No, they'll go for something altogether softer. A love story, perhaps. I just hope they manage to work out who the lovers were. And that's the point of the whole novel, which... I feel like could have been done with still more of a plot. It just could have been handled better and fleshed out better, and I'm all for revealing the true nature of war and everything. I just don't think it was done very well, or that she had picked the wrong characters to focus on, or something just didn't fit in this book. The Perfect Blend. Name a book or series that was both bitter and sweet, but ultimately satisfying. The Infernal Devices by Cassandra Clare, Clockwork Angel, Clockwork Prince, and Clockwork Princess. God, those books took me to hell and back, especially the third one. I, that's the only one in the series I've actually reread. And the ending, it, it's like a one-two punch. No spoilers, but just like, you think one thing's gonna happen, and then boom, the worst thing happens, and she she ends up making the best of it and getting a happy ending out of it anyway, and then it fast forwards, like, years and years and years later, and then that ending isn't all it's cracked up to be, or comes to a close, you know, and she starts a new chapter of her life. And then she gets this, it, it's like two happy endings wrapped up in two tragedies. And, and I loved it and I hated it and it was gut-wrenching and amazing and fuck this series. Green Tea, name a book or series that is quietly beautiful. <sighs> Cersei by Madeline Miller, it is one of my new all-time favorite books. And it is just this slow build of character development. It is, it is everything that The Silence of the Girls wasn't. It has all the same imagery, even more so. 
um, and and the epicness of the Greek legends, and it uses that to almost make like a character study and really fleshes out the Kirk Cersei's character from point A to point B and how she grew up and grew into her own person and suffered like emotional trauma and abuse from the people who are supposed to love her most and how she grew out of that pain and and learned to love herself and it's really psychological, like, it's got, like, Greek gods and, and the adventure aspect and stuff, but a lot of it just takes place on her home island, and it, it's just, the time spent on her inner monologue and, and her self-actualization is just mind-blowing, and I couldn't get enough. Chai Tea, name a book or series that makes you dream of far-off places. I'm going to go with Memoirs of a Geisha by Arthur Golden. I don't know that I would want to be part of that world. I think I'd want to visit it. I think it'd be just really, really cool to see it firsthand. I wouldn't want to be a Geisha. Like, I wouldn't want to live there, but I'd, I'd want to visit. Earl Grey, name your favorite classic. I don't have it here with me, but I am going to have to go with Pride and Prejudice. I grew up on that story and I adore it. And who doesn't love Lizzie Bennet and Mr. Darcy? Just, oh, oh, my heart. All right, so that was the last official question. At the end, it says, okay, co coffeeholics, coffee, oh, wasn't I trying to say that earlier and I was fucking it up? Okay, coffeeholics, sound off. How do you take your coffee? Or are you a tea person? Best kind of tea? Have you ever eaten a coffee bean by itself. I have. Yum, says the person. And out of curiosity, what's a book you see everywhere? Let's see if we all see the same books. Uh, working backwards, see a book everywhere. I already answered that. It's Harry Potter. Um, have I ever eaten a coffee bean? I have. A girl on the bus in middle school used to carry a bag of them on the bus every morning, chocolate-covered coffee beans, and they were the most amazing thing I'd ever had, and I have never seen them since, and I don't even know where to buy them, and now that I'm thinking about it, I kind of really, really super want chocolate-covered coffee beans. And am I a coffee or tea person, and what's the best kind of tea? I am both. I adore coffee, in the usually in the mornings, or if I really, really need to wake up, and... I love tea at night, it helps me relax and go to sleep as far as best kind. I am a chamomile person all the way. So that's it for you guys, that's all I got. I will see you in my next video. Follow me on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, my personal website, KaylinChainer.com. Subscribe, like the video, hit the notification icon, the little bell icon so you know when I have a new video coming out. And comment below for more tags you want me to do, more books you want me to read, or just to say hi. I love hearing from you guys. I'll see you soon. Bye.